Welcome to Hope is Here. My name is Greg Horn, and I want to ask you today, what are you thinking? What are you thinking? You know, we've all asked other people sometimes when they've made unwise decisions, what were you thinking? Or maybe you're like me, sometimes I've asked myself that question when I made a really unwise decision. I'll say, Greg, what were you thinking? But I want to talk today about maybe uh, the question we would ask Jesus today if he was choosing his team, okay? Uh, you know, there's been a real popular series out called The Chosen. Uh, if you haven't seen it, I highly recommend it. I think they do a really good job. I'm not saying it's perfect or the greatest thing ever, but I, it is uh, probably the best uh, that I've seen at least. I've not seen all the documentaries or films that have been made about Jesus and the Bible, but I really do think The Chosen has been well done as it shows the 12 guys that uh, did life with Jesus. They were his team. And, you know, it's interesting because obviously uh, UK basketball is a really big deal here in the state of Kentucky and uh, basketball fans are always wanting to know about the recruits. Who's going to be on UK's basketball team? And this past year when they had the, the, the freshman class come in, it was the best recruiting class by the ratings that Kentucky had had in quite a while. And everybody had at least four stars or three of the five guys had five stars. So people are really, really excited about that. And yet, if you look at the team that Jesus put together, the 12 guys that he chose to be on his team that would set the course of spreading the gospel after he left and went to heaven, uh, it wouldn't be people I think that we would choose. Uh, they wouldn't be four or five star recruits, five stars being the best that you can get, the highest rating. Uh, definitely would uh, not be the ones that we would suggest that Jesus would choose. Uh, Jesus didn't go to the religious places, the temple, the synagogues. Uh, he didn't go to the universities and recruit some of the most educated people in the land. Or he didn't go to like some of the wealthiest people there, uh, asking them to serve on his board or if they could recommend any good teammates for his ministry. You know, Jesus didn't do any of that. He, in fact, he did the exact opposite. And I'm just thinking, you know, at the beginning of this year, what I mean, what was Jesus thinking? That's what we would be saying. What was he thinking? Just like we question basketball coaches and say, what were they thinking? I think we would question Jesus, say, what were you thinking when you put that team together? Because Jesus did the exact opposite of what I think that we would expect today. And, you know, the interesting part was, uh, you know, none of these guys were theologians or known as great orators, you know, great communicators, speakers. In fact, they were considered outsiders as far as the religious establishment of Jesus' day was concerned back then over 2,000 years ago. They weren't outstanding recruits, okay, because of any natural talents or intellectual abilities that they had. And just like you and me, they were prone to making mistakes, uh, sticking their foot in their mouth, wrong attitudes, having lapses of faith, and bitter failures. In fact, uh, probably uh, the person that is uh, we think is the leader of the disciples, Peter, uh, was one that uh, probably had more failures than anybody, at least ones that were documented in the Bible. And, you know, as you take a look at the Bible, we have four lists of the 12 teammates that Jesus chose, and they're listed all in the New Testament of the Bible in the books of Matthew, the book of Mark, Luke, and Acts. And in all four of these biblical lists, these same 12 men were named, and the order in which they are given is strikingly similar. The first name in all the list is Peter, originally known as Simon, and Peter kind of stands out as the spokesperson for the group. And you know, I'm calling today and tomorrow's program is what were you thinking? Because I think that's the question, like I said earlier, that we'd be asking Jesus if he was going to pick the 12 people that he was going to do life with for, he did ministry, you know, it was about, he was 30 and he died when he was 33, but uh, from my research, that it looks like that Jesus only spent maybe a couple years with these guys, okay? So this was really crucial. Hey, you're going to spread the gospel, the good news, that Jesus has come. He's the Son of God. He's the Messiah. And you've only got about two years, maybe a little less, and yet, you know, 
you're going to choose some guys that are not great theologians, they're not great orators uh, you know, by the religious establishment or anybody in that day then, not people that you would have thought Jesus would chose for his team. But I want us to take a look at that, Matthew chapter Mark, verses, I'm sorry, in Mark chapter 3, verses 13 through 18, it says, Afterward, G Jesus went up on a mountain, and he called out to the ones he wanted to go with him. And they came to him. And then he appointed 12 of them and called them his apostles. They were to accompany Jesus, and he would send them out to preach, giving them authority to cast out demons. These are the 12 that he chose. Simon, whom he named Peter, James and John, the sons of Zebedee, but Jesus nicknamed them the sons of thunder. Now, I gotta be honest with you, as a guy, that would be pretty cool if Jesus called me, hey, you're a son of thunder. You know, it's kind of a masculine sounding thing, and uh, I love that. But also, after James and John and Peter, Andrew, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Thomas, James, the son of Alphaeus, Thaddeus, Simon the Zealot, and Judas Iscariot, who would later betray Jesus. I want to ask you that question today. Has uh, any friend of yours ever betrayed you? You know, friends, Jesus understands. He's been there. He totally understands. Jesus has been there. And we'll look at Judas. As we're going to be looking at all 12 of these disciples over the next few weeks. So I hope each Monday and Tuesday you'll be with us. But today, as we look at what were you thinking, Jesus, when you picked your team, these 12 guys, to be your disciples, your followers, uh, to set the course for the church and spreading the gospel all throughout the world, I want to take a look first at Andrew. Okay, Peter, obviously, is the most well-known of the 12, but I'm going to take a look at uh, Andrew. I love this quote by Brother Andrew, not Andrew, uh, the disciple, follower of Jesus, but Brother Andrew was a Dutch Christian missionary and just a powerful man of God, reached a lot of people, but I think his quote just kind of describes these 12 guys that Jesus chose for his team. He said, Brother Andrew the, said, the Bible is full of ordinary people who went to impossible places and did wondrous things simply because they decided to obey God. You know, Andrew's name is mentioned 12 times in the Bible, and yet out of those 12, three of them were they mentioned all 12 of his teammates that I just read from Mark. So actually only nine times in the whole Bible, all in the New Testament, that Andrew was mentioned. But, I think there's three things that we can learn from those nine times that he was mentioned by himself and uh, just some really good takeaways as we go into this new year. I mean, it's hard to believe it's already two weeks gone. We're here on the 15th of January, and yet um, just that time to kind of recalibrate our minds and brains and say, God, where are you working? What do you want to do in my life? Maybe you've already broken your New Year's resolutions, but I've got three simple questions, that, uh, statements and questions that I, I think maybe will kind of stir your mind and heart here early in this new year. And I'm so glad you're listening with us today. Or if you're watching on our YouTube channel, I uh, want to remind you we have a YouTube channel. I hope you'll subscribe to that. It helps people find us quicker and if you've been blessed by our program, whether it's a podcast or one of the videos of our radio program, uh, uh, the YouTube channel, uh, please leave a comment either on the podcast or YouTube programs. We would really, really appreciate it. It's encouraging to us and helps others find us. Uh, you can find our YouTube channel at Simply Hope is Here and my name, Greg Horn, or whatever platform you listen to on the podcast, just simply type in Hope is Here. We're on all the platforms, uh, Spotify, Podbean, iTunes, uh, you name it. But I uh, hope you'll subscribe to that and leave a comment. We would greatly appreciate it. But let's look at uh, Andrew, the teammate of Jesus. The first time Andrew's mentioned in the Bible is in John chapter 1, verses 35 through 42. It says, The following day, Jesus was again standing with two of his disciples. As Jesus walked by, John looked at him and declared, Look, there is the Lamb of God. When John's two disciples heard this, they followed Jesus. Jesus looked around them 
And he saw them following him, and he said, what do you want? Can you imagine? Jesus turned around and looked at you and said, hey, what do you want? <laughs> uh, but Andrew replied, uh, they replied, Rabbi, which means teacher, where are you staying? Jesus answered him by simply saying, come and see. It was about four o'clock in the afternoon when they went with him to the place where he was staying, and they remained with Jesus the rest of the day. Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, was one of these men who heard what John said and then followed Jesus. Andrew went to find his brother Simon and told him, We have found the Messiah, which means Christ. Then Andrew brought Simon to meet Jesus. Looking intently at Simon, Jesus said, your name is Simon, son of John, but you will now be called Cephas, which means Peter. So friends, Andrew was the first of the 12 disciples to be called on by, to be on Jesus' team. But I love that Andrew, always thinking about others, was responsible for introducing his more dominant brother, Peter, to Jesus. I mean, Peter and Andrew, they, they probably have been lifelong companions uh, with other sets of fishermen, the brothers James and John. The four of them shared common spiritual interest even before they met Jesus. They evidently took a break from their fishing business and visited the wilderness where John the Baptist was preaching and became disciples of his. And that is where they met Jesus. Andrew lived in the shadow, though, of his better-known brother Peter, Many of the verses that name him add that he was Peter's brother, as if that were the fact that made him significant. In such situations, usually when one brother overshadows another, it's kind of common to find resentment, a strong sibling rivalry, or even estrangement. And, you know, I can relate that a little bit. Uh, you know, both my brothers uh, uh, have done very well professionally. Uh, one's a college basketball coach and uh, had a great high school career at Tate's Creek. Uh, led his team to the state championship. The only time that Tate's Creek, unfortunately, has ever been to the state uh, basketball finals. And uh, I went there, so I say that as a former alumni back in the 80s. And yet uh, went on to have a outstanding career at Western Kentucky University, scored over a 1,000 points in his career, was all-conference, and been a head basketball coach at Western Kentucky University, the University of South Carolina, and now at Northern Kentucky University. My middle brother, who's a, a doctor, uh, and just does a great job as an oncologist and just a brilliant guy. Um, uh, quite often I'll get asked, hey, uh, are, you, are you Mike's brother or are you Darren's brother? And, uh, you know, I can relate that uh, a little bit about being known uh, more by your brothers uh, than uh, your own name. But, you know, uh, in Andrew's case, there's no evidence that he begrudged Peter's dominance. And uh, Andrew actually was the one that brought Peter, his brother Peter, to Jesus in the first place. And that makes me lead into my question here as we're coming to the end of our program today. You know, Andrew was like, man, Peter, you got to meet Jesus. He wanted his brother, even though he was probably more popular, definitely more outgoing and a leader, uh, he wanted him to meet Jesus. And so today as we close out this program, I want to ask you, who are you going to bring to meet Jesus in 2024? I want to say that one more time. Who are you going to bring to meet Jesus in 2024? Well, unfortunately, we're out of time, but I'm going to build upon that question and share more about the life of Andrew as we continue looking at what were you thinking. Thanks for listening. My name's Greg Horn, and this is Hope Is Here.